Okay, so let's start. Um, okay, so yeah, yesterday I finished the lecture with, uh, int I mean, explaining that I saw variations of attraction as a special case of uh, bi-algebraic uh, structure. And then I gave a general heuristic about uh, functional transcendent statement in the context of bi-algebraic structures. And then if the bi-algebraic structures are defined over Q bar, some atypical intersection uh, statement in terms of uh, Q bar bi-algebraic points being sparse. Uh, Okay, and then I explained that there was a problem for variations of abstractions because we don't know how to characterize the uh, bi Q bar algebraic points. So uh, I want, in some sense, first to finish the lecture of yesterday by introducing a general uh, set of conjectures um, in the context of variations of abstractions that generalize uh, Zilberping conjectures. And uh, then after that, uh, the plan is to come back to uh, Actionual for uh, Z variations of structures that I stated yesterday. So the result of uh, Baker and Timmerman. So I will try to give a sketch of the proof. And then uh, uh, the last part will be about, uh, on the contrary, a typical uh, intersection uh, statement, namely the theorem 4 that I stated uh, in the first lecture. Okay, so. Uh, A typical uh, intersection conjectures for uh, ZVHS. So this is a set of conjectures that I uh, developed, uh, I wrote uh, like three or four years ago. No, I'm not repeating, Javier, so don't smile. <laughs> OK, so uh, you start as uh, usual. So you have your uh, polarizable uh, ZVHS on S, which is a uh, smooth quasi-projective. So you get uh, an associated period map, where G is a generic mem for Tate group uh, uh, for V. And then uh, what you can do is that uh, uh, you will define uh, um, a numerical invariant associated to this uh, setting that I call the Hodgkin dimension. Uh, for S and this variation. So what is it? Well, you take uh, the dimension of the horizontal tangent bundle to uh, S gamma GM. So we know that the uh, period map has to be horizontal. So it maps the tangent space here to uh, the horizontal tangent space there, minus the dimension of uh, the image. Right, so morally speaking, uh, this is the co-dimension of the image inside uh, S gamma GM, except that you take into account only what is relevant here for Hodge theory, namely the horizontal uh, space. And then uh, I will say uh, that uh, if I have a sub variety Y in S uh, irreducible, I will say that it is atypical for S uh, V if uh, the Hodge dimension of y, and then you look at the restriction of v to y. So of course, this means that you have to reduce yourself to the smooth locus. But OK, let's just do it this way. Uh, is strictly smaller than the Hodge dimension of S v s. OK. So this means that uh, phi s uh, phi of y so maybe I should call this one phi s. It means that phi s of y uh, has excess intersection with uh, the collection of special variety here, with what I call the Hodge locus of uh, uh, of s gamma g m uh, once. Griffith's transversality is taken into account. Is taken into account. This intersection is one particular sub variety given yes. by the Mantel Tech group of the. Exactly. So uh, I will call uh, S atypical, so this is still part of the definition. Uh, the union of all atypical uh, sub varieties. Uh, 
So this is a subset of Sn, which a priori has uh, no nice structure, countable union of uh, algebraic stuff. And uh, then I will say, I will refine this definition saying that uh, uh, y is optimal for SV if uh, not only you have this inequality, but you have this same inequality replacing S by any Y prime containing strictly S. So if uh, the Hodgkin dimension of Y V restricted to Y is smaller than strictly than the Hodgkin dimension uh, of Y prime V restricted uh, to Y prime for all Y strictly contained in y prime, so y and y prime are irreducible, um, strictly contained, uh, well, contained in S. Okay, so optimal in particular is uh, atypical, but this is, this is a stronger uh, condition. So it's easy to check that uh, if, you, if you take the atypical subvarieties which are maximal, then they are optimal. Okay. So now, uh, what is the main uh, conjecture? Conjecture, well, there will be four statements, and it's an easy exercise to check that, in fact, they are equivalent. Uh, is that uh, this collection, as atypical, is not uh, the Zariski dense in S. Uh, C2 is that. Sorry? Given strict inequality, the yes. definition of optimal? Yes. Uh, C2 is that uh, S atypical is in fact uh, algebraic and uh, strict. So, ah, that is where the notation is bad. So, this is strict inside S and this is algebraic, closed algebraic uh, subspace. So, the finite union. So, a priori, you have this infinite union of things, but the claim is that. Uh, Every atypical is contained in a, a maximal one, and there are only finitely many maximal ones. Okay. C3 is that, uh, which is, as I said, is that S atypical of V is a finite union of uh, strict special subvarieties which of course are atypical and in fact they are optimal, so C4 because they are maximal. So is that S contains only finitely many uh, optimal subvarieties. So these are just uh, different ways of thinking of the same kind of problem, either in terms of algebraicity statement, so this guy has to be algebraic, or uh, it might be easier to prove uh, by some counting that you have only finitely many. But uh, what I claim is that, so easy to check is that C1 is equivalent to C2 to C3 and so on. Okay. So uh, let me maybe explain on uh, special cases uh, what those conjectures uh, uh, tell you. Uh, hmm? The subvarieties, uh, well, uh, for S and V, uh, I defined just, I mean, I've been defining since the beginning. Uh, so these are irreducible components of the jokers, and th these will be uh, uh, maximal ones. So uh, maybe you are a bit surprised if you think of the case of a Shimura variety, but let me explain. Uh, so if S is a Shimura variety, let me just write it, connected Shimura variety, and you take for V uh, the standard variation of a structure on a Shimura variety given by a representation of your uh, Shimura datum, um, then it's easy to check that uh, this atypical locus is empty. Uh, second case, suppose that S is a closed irreducible uh, sub-variety of uh, some Shimura variety, 
And uh, now you look at the restriction of V to S. So uh, Y inside S so still, uh, is atypical. This is the same thing as saying that the codimension in S of Y is strictly smaller than the codimension of the special closure of S in the uh, uh, special closure of a special closure of Y in the special closure of S. Right? So uh, this YSP is the smallest special subvariety uh, 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 of Yoshimura variety containing uh, Y, and S uh, special is the smallest uh, Shimura subvariety containing uh, S. So these are some examples where you can uh, make those conditions kind of completely explicit, more or less. Uh, then uh, a particular case of this conjecture is a generalized uh, Andreot conjecture. So the lemma is the following. You try to understand when is a CM point uh, uh, um, uh, 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 atypical. And uh, you have the general following criterion. Suppose that you have your variation of abstraction over S, and suppose that Y is an irreducible subvariety of S, and which is special. So this is a preimage of uh, uh, by the period map of a special subvariety in S gamma G M and of Shimura type. So I already introduced this terminology. This means that this is a preimage of uh, a Mumford Tate uh, uh, quotient, which is in fact a Shimura subvariety. Okay? So here you have your period map phi from S to S gamma GM. So here you have some uh, horizontality condition, but it might happen that you can embed horizontally, totally geodesically, a Shimura variety inside this thing. Okay? And then I will say that Y uh, is special of Shimura type if it is a pre-image by this period map of exactly one such Shimura subvariety horizontally embedded inside my uh, S gamma GM. And uh, now with a, I make a second assumption, not only it is a Shimura type, but it is very big in the sense that if you look at the restriction of phi uh, to y, so now it goes to y, so you know that at the end you arrive in some S gamma GM, but you know that you factorize through a Shimura variety embedded here. And I ask this map to be dominant. In other words, Y is really uh, truly exceptional. You are inside S, and essentially you are a Shimura variety embedded for Hodge theoretical reason inside S. Okay? So these are two strong conditions. And then the claim is that such a Y, which is this kind of Shimura variety, will always be atypical except if S gamma GM itself was already a Shimura variety. So Y, or let me write it this way, is not atypical for S D, if and only if already phi S satisfied exactly the same property. GM of Shimura type phi S dominant. So this is an easy exercise that uh, the condition, uh, those numerical conditions gives you. And the corollary is that a CM point is always atypical because this is a CM point is just a case where Y is a point, <laughs> OK? Then obviously, uh, 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 it will uh, satisfy those conditions. And so it tells you in particular as a corollary that uh, Y, any special point, any CM point, a CM point in SV is atypical unless phi S uh, is of Shimura tab and dominant. Right. So uh, this result that uh, the CM points are not atypical in Shimura varieties, uh, in some sense, it extends here. In fact, CM points are always atypical, except if you are already in the Shimura case. Okay. And so the main conjecture. Uh, implies uh, the following one. 
suppose that the union of special subvarieties of Shimura type uh, with dominant period map is Zaisky dense in S, then uh, phi S uh, from S to S gamma GM is of Shimura type with dominant period map. With dominant period map. So uh, you see easily that uh, this conjecture is equivalent to uh, the same conjecture, but only for CM point. So you have your variation of a structure. Suppose the set of CM points is dense in S, then in fact the period map is dominant to a Shimura variety. Okay, and so you see that this conjecture is equivalent to uh, the usual Andre Hort uh, for Shimura varieties. which now has been proven for uh, Shimura varieties of abelian type, plus the conjecture B, which is a purely uh, group theoretical uh, statement, which is the uh, same assumption as in A prime, as in A prime, and then the conclusion is that the target uh, is a Shimura variety. Then... Uh, So I wrote all this as conjectures. I have very little evidence for this. Okay? But it's just that I think that it clarifies at least what should be looked at. So maybe this should be just some questions. So it's really this conjecture B is kind of uh, very strong, right? I mean, it tells you you have a variation of structures. You suppose that you have a Zariski dense set of CM points. Then, uh, in fact, the target has to be a Shimura variety. Your generic Mumford group has to be a Shimura type. And the associated uh, 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 period map takes value in a Shimura variety associated to that group. OK, so maybe I will give uh, one example where uh, this conjecture recovers a conjecture which is well known to people working in Calabi-Yaws. So example, suppose that x is a uh, smooth uh, Calabi-Yaw uh, threefold. Okay, so this means that uh, X has trivial canonical bundle and it's simply connected. Uh, then uh, you look at uh, the cohomology of X in degree three. So, uh, well, maybe VZ. Points in conjecture A prime. Yes. What well, ah, are CM points are well defined. There are just points where the Mumford take group is a torus. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Maybe I did not mention that. I mentioned CM points yesterday, but this is a general definition. Just mum 48 group is uh, abelian. So it's automatically a torus in that case. Okay. So uh, suppose you take the set cohomology of, uh, uh, so this is a weight 3 arch structure. So this means that uh, you have VZ, well, sorry, I started with H on my notes, that's right, H. So you have HC that decomposes at H30 plus uh, H. 2, 1 plus H12 plus H03, and this guy is of dimension 1. And so by Hodge symmetry is also this one, so the only interesting parameter is the dimension of H21. And then, um, so there is the first remark is that, okay, those things are weight 3, but essentially they are understood by two weight 1 Hodge structures. Namely, you can construct the veil uh, uh, Hodge structure of weight 1 associated to this 
So this is the weight one arch structures given by H10. So you have to pair some of those spaces and you choose uh, uh, the right one. So H03 plus H21. And then because the polarization is alternating, plus minus plus minus, then you see that this guy is in fact a polarized arch structure. So uh, you can out of it construct uh, an abelian variety, which is a veil Jacobian which is uh, HC uh, modulo uh, H10 uh, veil uh, and uh, HZ. So this is uh, an abelian variety. So although you are in weight three, nevertheless, you can get uh, this information in weight one. So uh, what is the problem of this veil Jacobian is that they were forgotten as soon as they were invented because they do not vary holomorphically in families. So they are been varieties, but uh, they are not. They don't have a nice uh, variational interpretation. Okay, so uh, uh, there is a second uh, weight one hot structure, which is the usual Griffiths Jacobian that you can associate to this. So uh, let's write it H one G G for Griffiths. So now the H one zero G is uh, the natural one, so it's just H three zero plus H21, right? So you are just, so this is still symmetric. Uh, those one, this one was also symmetric. But now uh, this one is not polarized because you are taking uh, two co uh, consequent uh, uh, spaces. So not polarized. So uh, you get also a Jacobian, but this is just a torus. So the Griffiths uh, Jacobian uh, constructed as, uh, exactly by the same recipe. Uh, replacing H1W by H1G, so this is just a complex torus. Now there is a nice result of Boccia that tells you that understanding uh, the Mumfortic group uh, uh, of uh, these weight three hot structures is essentially understanding the uh, Mumfortic group of this two uh, weight one. And so, in fact, what it proves is quite nice. It proves that. Uh, this weight three uh, hot structures is CM, so the Mumforte group is a torus, uh, if and only if uh, both uh, H1W and H1G are CM, and moreover, the uh, Mumforte torus uh, commute. And the Mumforte tori, so we get two Mumforte tori that are both embedded inside GL of. Uh, uh, HQ and they have to commute there. Here. There are subgroups of this uh, general linear group. Uh, the cohomologies are living in the com. Yes? Okay, so uh, now uh, look at the variational story underlying this. Uh, so it's well known. I mean, you look at the deformation space uh, of X. So you know that this is a smooth by 10 to the half. This is a smooth uh, quasi-projective uh, variety. So uh, you uh, get the corresponding R. Now I will call it VZ with fiber. So on S and with fiber at X uh, equal to HX. Okay, so you have your uh, variation of a structure of weight three, and um, okay. So what is the assumption in Calab out? The canonical bundle is trivial. So canonical bundle trivial, pi one trivial. So simply connected ah, okay. and smooth here. Yeah. Okay, so uh, so there are examples. Where S contains uh, infinitely many CM points. So people have been able to construct such examples. Uh, so the conjecture A prime uh, says in that case that uh, the irreducible subvarieties of S containing Zariski then set uh, of CM points are of Shimura type. 
with dominant period map. In other words, in those moduli space of Calabi, you should be able to embed uh, Shimura varieties uh, with a dominant uh, period map. And, uh, um, and in all known examples, this is true, and basically you embed ball quotients. Okay? And this conjecture uh, was done a long time ago by uh, Gukov and Vafa for different reasons that I don't understand, having to do with uh, conformal field theory. Uh, but at least uh, this is an indication that maybe this conjecture, this very general uh, conjecture, is not complete uh, bullshit. And, uh, but notice that my conjecture predicts more. It predicts also that there are only finitely many such things, such Shimura varieties, uh, maximal, embedded in there. OK, so this is all what I wanted to say uh, about this. OK, so let's go back uh, in some sense to yesterday, and let's try to indi indicate some ideas in the proof of uh, action UL. Mm. Uh, so of course, I will not give all the details. and. Uh, I have to say that in preparing the lecture, uh, I have to complain that the paper is very sketchy at m many places, <laughs> but, uh, but OK. <coughs> so I think everything works, but OK. So, uh, So yesterday I gave the general statement of uh, the actionual um, heuristic uh, for uh, bi-algebraic uh, structures. Uh, so now let me repeat uh, uh, the special case for a variation of our structures. So we are as above, we have V over S. So we get our period map from uh, S gamma GM. Well, in fact, here I should introduce some modification, but it's not very important. I, at some point, it will be important to the proof. Is that I do not really look at the period map associated to the Mumford Tate group, but I can replace the Mumford Tate group by the algebraic monodromy group. So I really look at the factorization through the weakly special uh, subvariety, uh, smallest weakly special subvariety of my period domain containing uh, the image. Okay? It will come at some point. It's just that I want uh, the monodromy to be dense, Zariski dense in G. Okay. Or you can assume uh, you can start with a family where you are the Risky dance in the um, Mumford Tate group. But anyway, at some point, there will be a reduction where you need this. OK, so uh, what is the picture? So let me uh, draw Yeah. So you have D over uh, D mod gamma. Let me call pi uh, this projection. Then you have S phi. And then you can consider in the analytic category, you can take uh, the fiber product of this. So you have a Cartesian square in the analytic category. So I will call uh, W. So please remember the uh, letter, because it will be important. Uh, so this is W, and I look at it as being inside uh, S cross D. And this guy, I will think of it as being inside S cross D hat, which is an algebraic variety. Okay, It's just a product of my algebraic variety by this flag variety. OK, so uh, what is the theorem? So this is action UL. So this is due to uh, Baker and Zimmerman. And this is the action UL uh, for variation of a structure. So this is uh, last year. Um, it tells you that uh, if you take V inside S cross uh, D hat, so you start here uh, uh, an algebraic subvariety, irreducible. OK, then uh, you can uh, consider uh, uh, an irreducible analytic component uh, of uh, V intersected with W. So W is what yesterday I denoted more or less by uh, diagonal. Okay. So uh, if co-dimension of uh, V intersected with W uh, is strictly smaller, so I'm making intersection. So uh, I look at the intersection of V 
with W. So if it is uh, generic, then the I know what is the codimension of this intersection. This should be the sum of the codimension. So suppose I'm not generic. I have an excess intersection. So this codimension is smaller than the codimension in S cross D uh, of uh, um, uh, V uh, plus the codimension of, uh, well, here you can pick it here. It doesn't change anything. Then there is a, the, the, the theorem is that there is a good geometric reason for this. And that is that uh, then the projection of uh, V intersected with W. So uh, to offer, I'm making the assumption that uh, I'm taking one irreducible component. OK, yeah. This guy is not necessarily connect irreducible, of course. So I take an irreducible component, even if I do not write it, because it will be a pain uh, all the time. OK? It's really one I fix an irreducible component and then argue with that irreducible component. OK? Then uh, the projection of that irreducible component in S is contained. Uh, in a weekly special strict subvariety of S, right? So maybe uh, in this situation, this is more understandable than the statement, the very precise statement that I gave yesterday. But this is equivalent. Okay. No, no, the general conjecture is, it was the general conjecture is just a heuristic. Yeah. So, um, but uh, when you apply this heuristic here, you, an equivalent form of the conjectures that I stated yesterday is this one, and this was proven by Baker and Zimmerman. So I, I made the conjecture in the same paper where I did uh, this conjecture about atypical intersection, and then they, they proved it or almost uh, yeah, very fast. <laughs> No, I mean, I stated an equivalent form. Okay. This is equivalent. So I claim that this is equivalent to the axe annual that I stated yesterday for the special case of bi-algebraic structure corresponding to my period map. Okay. Okay, so uh, the goal is to give some idea of the proof. So of course, I cannot give uh, all the ideas. So, uh, so basically, there is a tame topology part. And this is the one that I want to explain. And then uh, there is essentially a purely uh, negative curvature part, which in fact, to a large extent, uh, is similar to what we did for Shimura varieties with uh, Ulmoni FF, even if this is more tricky, uh, technically speaking. But the, uh, the ideas are basically the same. So let's try to give an idea of the proof. So the proof is a complicated induction. So uh, you start. So you denote your datum will be this and uh, your v inside, close irreducible inside s cross d hat. Okay, so this is your datum. And associated to this datum, you define uh, a numerical invariant that I would call the type. And the induction will be on the type. So what is its type? It's a triple. Is uh, first a dimension of s. Then there is a dimension of v minus the dimension of the intersection. So again, if I wanted to be extremely precise, which are not in the paper, I should choose fix uh, and one irreducible component of this. And then uh, the last one is minus the dimension of the intersection. Okay. And now uh, those types are ordered by lexicographic uh, ordering. So uh, with lexicographic order. Okay. Then uh, now uh, we say that uh, V uh, is bad at some point P in the intersection uh, V with W if, ah, uh, let me give a name to this inequality because otherwise it would be a pain. I will call it star to be original. Ah, uh, if uh, star is satisfied at P. And uh, now we proceed by contradiction. So we suppose that we have a counterexample. And now we take the counterexample with the smallest possible type. OK? So suppose. Uh, 
uh, that uh, we are in the situation where we have some uh, v uh, to s and where uh, we have a v0 in uh, irreducible inside s cross uh, d hat, which is uh, bad in the sense that it satisfies uh, this inequality, but uh, not satisfying. Uh, the conclusion of the theorem and uh, with mini minimal type among all the possible counter examples minimal type in other words as soon as I have a type which is smaller then uh, the theorem is true okay and then I want to obtain a contradiction uh, out of this so the way to do that is uh, try to deform V. So uh, we proceed by deformation. Uh, so I will call M uh, 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 inside the Hilbert scheme of S cross D hat, D chat. And once more, I should compactify S so that it really makes sense. And of course, they don't care about such details in the paper, but that's OK, uh, I hope. Uh, uh, then I de define M as being the connected component of uh, the Hilbert scheme uh, containing uh, V0. The class of V0. So uh, now, uh, what is, ah, there will be a big diagram that we'll try to keep. So uh, you have your M, and uh, here you have S cross uh, D hat, and here you have the universal family. So this is the universal family. Right, so uh, this is the set, set theoretically, this is a, a set of uh, couples P in, uh, uh, um, in uh, uh, V intersected with W, but okay, let's, in S cross D uh, hat, uh, such that uh, uh, P is in V. Okay, and uh, such that, well, Let me just write this, and uh, let me write the class here. So this is a point in, so v, the class of V is a point uh, representing V in the helper scheme, and I'm just taking the uh, tautological family uh, there, okay? So now here I have a S cross D, so I restrict myself uh, from uh, the complete flag to this uh, open uh, orbit, so I can pull back this family, and uh, now, uh, from this, uh, I can consider my intersection, W, which was uh, my fiber product of a, a D mod gamma, so which was my, cl my closed subspace, analytic subspace here. And so I get the family by pullback. OK? So uh, now, uh, I want to define a, a, a bad locus in family, so define uh, B being uh, the set of couples uh, PV uh, in uh, S, uh, well, in this family, in fact, over W, such that uh, you are bad at that point, P. So dimension at P of uh, V intersected with W is at least N0. Where N0, ah, sorry, I forgot to say uh, what is N0. Uh, N0 is the dimension of the uh, bad intersection, where N0 is dimension of V0 intersected with W, where V0 was your original uh, guy. Okay, so uh, this is a subset uh, of uh, 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 VW. 
And uh, so you can think of it that as being the set of, uh, um, how to say, at least equally bad points, right? You have some bad points, bad points corresponding to the, the uh, V0 intersected with W, but you are also, uh, now you try to deform uh, V0 into V, and you look just at the locus where uh, the, bad, uh, the bad condition is still satisfied at dimension at least N0. And uh, the claim is that this is a closed uh, analytic subspace because uh, this dimension is a pair semi-continuous. Okay. Um, so, uh, okay, so we have this. And now uh, the main step using O minimality is to prove that this set is very big. In other words, uh, you have a natural projection, so you are in uh, 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 VW, and uh, here, over here uh, you have your S. So the claim is that, in fact, B uh, to S is subjective. So starting with a single counterexample, then necessarily, if you take it of a minimal dimension, then this set of bad points has to subject onto uh, the base. So this is the first proposition, is that uh, B to S is subjective. And uh, this is where you, we use O-minimality. So the proof is, is that we use O-minimal chow. So in this proof, what is nice is that you have the two criteria of algebraization taking a role, uh, O-minimal chow here, and later uh, uh, there will be Pilawilki. So uh, let's try to make uh, the picture of this proof. So uh, you start, you have your W, then you have your D, I, I'm sure my picture would be a disaster, but and here you have D mod gamma, okay? So uh, what is the idea of the construction? Well, you have this universal family here, and uh, uh, what you use, now you want to use O minimality. So uh, basically, I if you remember the proof of the definability of the peer map, what we did is we constructed abstractly something replacing uh, a definable uh, uh, fundamental domain for the universal cover. And the way it was done is we were covering S by uh, polydisks and uh, finitely many, and uh, such that this F become uh, the union of uh, Ziegel sets for those polydisks, so to some power Ri cross uh, delta dimension S uh, minus Ri, a finite union, I is equal 1 to N, let's say. Okay, and so, uh, of course, the universal cover uh, maps to uh, W, and so F also maps to W, and you add that map, okay? Okay, so what I can do is I can pull back this family to this fundamental uh, set here. So really, if you want to think geometrically, think that this thing is living in the universal cover. Of course, it's not true. This is a disjoint union. I've just take, taken finitely many charts, okay? But you can, you can think just that you manage to construct a definable uh, fundamental set in the universal cover. This is really what you are doing. So here uh, I can uh, call, uh, pull back uh, this uh, VW to VF here. What do you write that sigma x to the power? So remember, uh, the way we define the, uh, uh, we look at uh, the definability of the peer map was to compactify this with cross normal crossing divisor take finitely many charts around those divisors, and then take uh, universe in the universal cover, okay. uh, depending on the monodromy, either you take a Ziegel set or you take the full disk. Okay. okay. This. What, what is the power of the full disk? Uh, the dimension minus, the, just the total dimension is dimension of S. These are charts, right? So, so sorry, this is dimension S minus Ri. Okay. So uh, now uh, what is the idea is that basically you are just enrich enriching uh, this picture to this universal family. In other words, uh, the remark is that uh, the group gamma acts uh, on uh, x cross d cross m uh, by uh, the usual operation. So you do nothing on, uh, on s cross d cross m uh, by uh, gamma 
acts on uh, my point P and uh, my uh, variety V by uh, gamma P. So the action here does nothing on S, but now you have the action on D. Okay, so trivial action. So P is in S cross D. The action is trivial on S, but here you have the canonical uh, action on D. And uh, of course, uh, because V is in the dual, there is also an action of the complex point, so it also acts on. Uh, okay. All right, and uh, by definition, preserves uh, VW, which is inside this thing. So this means that in the analytic context, every, everything here is complex analytic, so you can take the quotient. So uh, now this is a C analytic space. Okay. And uh, basically, we are playing the same thing, uh, the same game as for the definability of period map, but at the, at the level of that family, basically. So um, the remark is that uh, as uh, V is proper of uh, uh, S cross uh, D at, then you know that this new W, which is just a pullback, is proper of uh, uh, W. And so when you take this quotient, uh, the map new S to S uh, is proper. So in this diagram, up to now, you don't really need this part. I'm just saying that here, I still have a gamma action. And that uh, this pass to the quotient here to give me some uh, new s to s. So I'm back down. OK, so this is the first ingredient is that uh, this map uh, is a proper complex analytic. OK, so that's good. So now uh, I notice that I can also, uh, in the same way as I realize S as a quotient of this by an etal equivalence relation, I can realize this guy as a quotient of that guy by a, a f etal definable uh, equivalence relation. So, but uh, Vs is also Vf modulo uh, this equivalence relation. Uh, given by gamma, but this one now, uh, and uh, Vf, so induced by gamma. But now what is the advantage of this presentation is that you see that it has a canonical structure of definable space. So uh, a new f in f cross m has a canonical uh, definable structure. Because this is a restriction of an algebraic subvariety of uh, S cross D check times M uh, to F cross M. So by definition, it has a canonical definable structure. And for this, uh, this relation gamma, this equivalence relation associated to gamma, maybe I will not put the gamma because this is unreadable. Uh, this is an etal definable relation, right? So I'm just re replaying the game that I played before. I write S as the quotient of F by this etal definable relation. And I say that everything comes into family. So uh, VF is also, VS is also the quotient of VF by this. Okay. And so uh, this means that uh, VS has a canonical uh, definable structure coming from that quotient. Um, all right. So now I do the same thing for B. Okay. So uh, my B here is inside uh, VW. And uh, I, I claim that everything passes. In fact, this B is stabilized by those actions, so everything goes back also to uh, this thing. So likewise, BF, which I defined the set of guys PV uh, in uh, VF, such that the dimension 
at P of V intersected with F is uh, larger than uh, N0, uh, is complex analytic in, v in this Vf and definable because the dimension is a definable function. And so it tells me that when I take the quotient, I obtain exactly the same way my Bs inside uh, Vs. And this guy is uh, C analytic and definable and, well, proper over S because uh, uh, new S uh, was proper over S. So, uh, and of course, this guy is still, still equal to my B mod gamma. Right? So I'm just saying that the big action uh, gamma on uh, v, uh, W stabilizes B, which is obvious uh, on the definition. So I get the same uh, picture. So uh, now, uh, what do I get? Uh, I get that I have Bs over S uh, proper. So by Remerstein, uh, um, I get that uh, the image Z is a complex analytic subspace in uh, S n. Everything here should be analytic, sorry. Hmm? Everything here is in the analytic category. So uh, this Z uh, in SN uh, has to be complex analytic. This is the image of, uh, so let's call, uh, I don't know, uh, P, this projection. So this is P of B uh, N S. Uh, it has to be a complex analytic subspace by Ramach time because the map is proper. And now I use the definability. So as B S, as P, is definable uh, by construction. This implies also that Z is uh, definable in some ominimal structure, in occurrence uh, R and X. And so out of uh, ominimal chow, I get that Z inside S is algebraic. Okay. But then uh, uh, I claim that this implies that Z is equal to S. So Z is the image of B. I've proven it is algebraic, but then I claim that because of the minimality assumption uh, on S, uh, this guy, uh, then uh, the claim is that uh, then uh, Z has to be equal to S, because otherwise, and this is claimed very fast in the paper, so I tried to check it and I think this is okay, but uh, you still have to make some computation. If you restrict the variation of our structure uh, to Z, and then uh, you take uh, your V0 uh, base change to Z, then uh, this would be bad. Bad uh, of smaller type. And still contradicting the theorem. In other words, you have to check that uh, you keep uh, the uh, inequality of codimension. Okay. Uh, It's clearly of smaller type because then the dimension of Z is smaller than the dimension of S. And the first uh, order is the dimension of the uh, support of the variation in your lexicographic order. So, so this is uh, where you use uh, basically uh, 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 minimal chow. Then, uh, well, I'm very late, but uh, it's okay. Then what is the second part of the argument using uh, O-minimality? Well, in fact, basically there, uh, you do not use O-minimality, but you use the power of uh, the link semi-simplicity theorem uh, to prove the following statement. Okay, so now we have proven that there are a lot of bad points for this counterexample. And so the proposition two is the following. So uh, now I have uh, my uh, universal family over M. So I add my uh, new uh, W uh, over W, but now I can also base change to W, to new W. And inside new W, I have B, uh, which was closed, and so I have new B, the universal family now uh, over uh, B. Right? I know this is, uh, yeah. So uh, you have to think that this new B is the family of equally bad uh, varieties. Okay. 
Uh, then, uh, so this was just uh, definition. Then the claim is that for a generic fiber here, the stabilizer uh, in G of Z of this fiber is finite. So then the claim is that stabilizer V is finite for a very general, so outside a countable uh, union of algebraic uh, subvarieties, uh, well, complex analytic here, but we'll see that we can go to uh, uh, BS. Of for a very general fiber uh, V of new B. So this is the claim. So uh, what is the proof of this? And this is where the induction is kind of nice using uh, Dunning semi simplicity and that all this business is very complicated in the mixed case because you don't have splitting. Uh, so uh, so we have defined this uh, BS, which was uh, the quotient of B by gamma. And uh, we have proven uh, that uh, uh, um, uh, this thing was proper over S. And so this is still in the analytic category. So uh, pi 1 of BS, of course, uh, acts naturally. So notice, of course, that uh, there might be uh, many fixed points here. So I don't, know I don't know anything about the singularities of that thing. I mean, it's, it's really bad. But uh, what I know is that the pi 1 acts naturally uh, on B uh, via, well, of course, pi 1 of Bs is mapped to pi 1 of S. Right? This is over S. And uh, uh, to uh, gamma, which is your representation uh, of monodromy. So uh, now uh, the remark is that uh, this image uh, has finite index, right? Because this map is proper uh, subjective. So each time you have a complex analytic morphism which is proper subjective, then uh, the image of the pi one is finite index in, in the target. So uh, it tells you that the image uh, gamma b of pi 1 bs in uh, g, and this is where I use the replacement of the Mumforte group as a, by the monodromy. It has to be uh, q is, uh, Zarsky, is q Zarsky dense. Okay? This is where I use the remark that I made at the beginning that you have to argue with the monodromy group rather than the Mumforte group. Then, uh, now, uh, this implies, uh, now the action of G on D hat is algebraic, so this implies that uh, for the very general fiber, uh, V of uh, new B, uh, um, um, this image uh, is a fixed group gamma V, the stabilizer, the stabilizer, So I'm just looking, you, you take all the points uh, uh, in B and you look at the stabilizer of the fiber. And then I'm saying that because uh, um, it has to be uh, an algebraic subgroup uh, of uh, G, so uh, you know that outside a countable union of analytic subvarieties, uh, you have to be uh, constant. So the stabilizer uh, of, uh, so I will call it, yeah, the stabilizer of V in gamma, is constant, is a fixed group uh, gamma uh, V. Okay? And uh, uh, notice now what is the important point is that uh, if V is in this locus of very general points, so if V is very general in that sense, that it, its uh, stabilizer is that group, uh, then uh, for any gamma in the base, in gamma B, uh, gamma V is also very general. So in group terms, this means that uh, gamma V is normalized by gamma B. Okay? And this is where you win, because now this means that uh, ah yeah okay. Uh, this implies that if you call theta, 
So now recall that I want to prove that this group is trivial. Okay? This generic uh, stabilizer of the fiber. I want to prove it is trivial. So I just have to take the Zariski closure and prove that the connected component of the identity uh, is trivial. Well, I have a finite problem, but I can go to finite et al. Uh, covers. This is no big deal. So I look at uh, gamma v uh, zar over q. Um, and then I take a connected component of the identity. And uh, this tells you that uh, this is still normalized by gamma b. So this is also normalized by uh, the algebraic uh, closure of gamma b. But we know that gamma b is the high dense in G, so it's normalized by G. Okay? Uh, and then uh, now we want to prove, uh, finish the proof by, by the claim that uh, theta is trivial. Okay? Well, now prove it. Uh, you get uh, that G normalizes this. this G, uh, the adjoint group at least is semi simple, so up to isogeny, let's say. Uh, this is fine because, as I said, I take the monodromy. So this group is really semi-simple, so this is really uh, an isogeny. I have to go to uh, the adjoint group to get the product. But let's suppose this is just a stupid product. So this means that I can decompose it uh, because of this normalization in theta 1 cross theta 2, where theta 2 is theta. And suppose now that uh, this group is non-trivial. So what happens uh, for my peer map? Well, it induces the composition of the peer domain as uh, d1 cross d2. And so I will get a peer map, phi, which will be, uh, which have two components. So from s to uh, d1 mod gamma 1 cross d2 mod gamma 2. So now the idea is to project everything on the first factor. So look at this new peer map, just the first component. And then out of this, construct a guy uh, of smaller type. <sighs> so uh, now uh, I look at uh, S to uh, D1 mod gamma 1. So this is my uh, new period map. And uh, now out of V, as V is contained in S cross D hat and is invariant. So D hat now is D1 hat cross D2 hat. And this is invariant under theta 2. So uh, this means that V is of the form V1 cross uh, D2 hat uh, with V1 in uh, S cross D1. OK? So uh, now uh, I can look at the intersection of this uh, new V1 uh, with uh, uh, S cross uh, D1 uh, over D1 mod gamma 1. So this is in S cross D1. And then I will argue with this. So uh, as now the claim is that uh, V1 intersected with W1 cannot be contained in a strict weekly special subvariety of S. Because otherwise, V, which is a preimage uh, of V1, contains a preimage of V1, would be otherwise, otherwise uh, V intersected would be contained. Right, I'm just saying that uh, in this product situation, the weekly special uh, comes from uh, the factors. Okay? So uh, otherwise, it would be contained in a strict weekly special of S. Then, uh, and we know that uh, S is minimal uh, among the guys, uh, the, the bad guys. Necessarily, I know that uh, for V1 intersected with W1, th the intersection is generic. So I get that the co-dimension in S cross D1 of uh, V1 intersected with v W1 is actually equal to the co-dimension in S cross D1 hat of V1 uh, plus the co-dimension in S cross uh, D1 of W1. So this is uh, double star. 
So out of my V, which was bad, I construct uh, its projection of one f uh, over one factor, which has to be good, because otherwise, uh, otherwise I would uh, ruin the minimality. I'm claiming that if V1 intersected with W1 would be contained in a strict weakly special subvariety of S1, then this, this would imply, because uh, V1 is nothing else than uh, the, pre -image, uh, the image of V by projection on the first factor, this would imply that V intersected with W would also be contained in a strict weakly special uh, subvariety of S. Okay, so applying the theorem, because I'm, I'm, I am in lower dimension, uh, then I deduce this equality of dimension. And uh, now the remark is that, note that W over W1 has finite fibers, uh, uh, not finite, but discrete. So uh, in terms of dimension, if you look at what happens, you will see that you get exactly the same invariant that, uh, that you begin with. So this is dimension, uh, W is dimension W1, dimension of W intersected with Z is uh, dimension of W1 intersected with V1, whereas the codimension in the adequate space of V1 is the codimension of V. And so if you look at those two, uh, I guess I er erase the first equality for v inequality for V, but I claim that you cannot have at the same time an equality and inequality, and so if you look at this, uh, this contradicts star uh, as soon when you make the computation of codimension, as soon as phi 2 is non constant, i.e., uh, theta is non trivial, theta 2 equal theta is non trivial. Okay, so if you make this uh, projection business, you look at the equalities that you get, you compare it to the original inequality, and then the claim is that as soon as the second period map is non-trivial, then you get an extra term that, and you get a contradiction out of comparing those, this inequality to that equality. So this proves that theta has to be trivial. Star was the original inequality. So the codimension of the intersection is strictly smaller than uh, the sum of the codimension. Okay, so this is everything uh, that you get uh, from uh, this algebra geometric perspective. The rest comes from uh, uh, differential geometry. So here I want to, I don't want to spend my life on this. Oh, this is much too long. Okay, so I will try to uh, not give all the details. I will just catch the argument. Because I want to talk also on typical. So uh, now the claim is that, uh, so remain, recall that we are still arguing by contradiction in all this picture. And so the now the contradiction is that uh, we get the opposite to uh, proposition two, namely uh, we prove. So we obtain a contradiction by proving uh, proposition three that in fact the stabilizer uh, uh, of G of Z of uh, V is infinite uh, for any fiber uh, V of nu B. So we were proving that generically it is finite and now we are proving that this is infinite. And, uh, okay, let me uh, sketch the proof. So you look at the following set. So this is a set of elements uh, i. So the proof is very similar to what we did yesterday for proving uh, axiom domain uh, in the Abelian case. So we construct a definable set, prove that it contains a lot of integral points by counting, then apply pillar wilkie so that we are sure that we get a semi-algebraic uh, set inside this i. 
And then arguing geometrically with that, we exhibit infinitely many guys in the stabilizer. So this is the idea. So I uh, will be the set of uh, Q of element G in G of R, such that the dimension of uh, the translate of uh, my fundamental set, uh, uh, the translate of V intersected with my fundamental set uh, is exactly N0. Okay, so as I said, this is similar to the set uh, sigma uh, of lecture three for axion domain for a billion varieties. Then, uh, as before, uh, G of R has a canonical real algebraic structure and. Uh, because uh, everything is definable here in R and X, but then we know that uh, I is R and X definable. Okay, so uh, uh, so what we want to do is that uh, what we want to say is that if we have uh, uh, exactly uh, uh, intersection of V with W, which is exactly of dimension N0 and that intersect F, then we want to argue that uh, this uh, U intersection passes through many fundamental sets. Okay? So if U is an N0 dimensional uh, component of uh, V intersected with W, then uh, we know that for each gamma so an f uh, that you meet, then uh, gamma is in i. So uh, the only thing that we have to prove is that uh, u is cutting a lot of uh, fundamental sets. So, uh, and this is what we do uh, now, but uh, the, the counting is much more complicated than yesterday. But basically, uh, the idea comes from what we did uh, for axiom demand, and it's a bit more tricky because you have to use the horizontality, but uh, otherwise the curvature arguments are the same. So uh, we may assume U meets F. So we fix a, a point in F intersected with U and we'll, we'll argue with uh, uh, spheres, uh, balls uh, centered at that point. For uh, the uh, standard homogeneous uh, uh, Riemannian metric on D. Okay, so uh, so let y zero uh, be the image of uh, x zero uh, in uh, d hat. This thing has a natural projections to d hat. Uh, okay, so uh, now the claim is that for any gamma uh, in gamma, uh, the volume uh, so this volume will be the volume of the projection uh, on d for the homogeneous metric on D of U intersected with gamma minus one F is the same as the volume of V uh, intersected with gamma minus one F. So th this is by definition. And uh, now we use the fact that this guy is algebraic. So a priori this guy, when you think of it, uh, it's just analytic. But uh, this guy is algebraic in uh, D hat. And so it has a certain degree. And what I'm saying is that when I move V by gamma, I preserve the degree. And so more or less this degree is exactly that volume. And so this is, it remains essentially constant. So what you prove is that uniformly in gamma, this is O of 1. So it stays bounded. So this argument we already had uh, for action in demand. Uh, and so this tells you that if you want to count the number of elements in gamma such that u intersected with gamma minus 1 f intersected with x cross the ball of radius uh, y0 in r, in r sorry, s, um, then this is essentially uh, up to a multiplicative constant, the volume of u uh, intersected with s cross this ball. 
So this argument was also in action demand for uh, Shimura variety. So it tells you that counting elements is essentially the same thing as uh, computing a volume. Okay? And now you, you think that you're in good shape because you know that by definition of Hodge theory, uh, this, the image of your U uh, will be horizontal, where the curvature is very negative. So it has a tendency to be uh, exponential, uh, exponentially divergent. And uh, this is uh, what uh, you want to prove. So claim, and this is one of the propositions in uh, Baker and Zimmerman, is that uh, this volume grows exponentially uh, in, uh, in the radius. So there exists constant beta and r larger than 0, such that for any closed uh, positive dimensional horizontal analytic uh, sub-variety z in the ball b y 0 of r, then for r larger than this big uh, r, the volume of z uh, has to be larger than uh, the exponential uh, beta r, and then there is a constant which is uh, basically the multiplicity at y0 uh, of z. Okay. So, uh, so this, is, this is given by some kind of Poincaré-Lelong uh, formula. Uh, as when in Chinois varieties, it's a bit simpler. We, but uh, at the end, this comes back to that using a uh, Vangto theorem. So this is the same uh, thing. Okay, so we have this. And on the other hand, so I know that this volume uh, uh, will grow exponentially fast. Now, uh, remi I remind you that in Pila Wilkie, what you have to compute is the height on the group, and you are counting the group, so you have to have a height function on the group g of q. So you look at g of q, you embed it inside g of r, and then you embed it inside gl of vr, and then you map it to the symmetric space, and then you take any norm which is on, on, on the symmetric space. Basically, you take the... the, the, uh, the I don't know, the, I mean, the whatever norm you want on your matrices, <laughs> okay? and it will work. And this is uh, uh, the height you uh, consider. And uh, the other claim is that uh, for any R, which we prove also uh, in the uh, axiom domain case for Shimura, is that uh, with, uh, if you look at uh, an element in G of Z, such that the translate of your fundamental domain by this element crosses uh, S cross uh, BY0 uh, of R, then essentially uh, the height of the element has to be uh, of the form exponential of O of R. Okay. So here you have a exp uh, true exponential, and here also you have uh, this uh, exponential here, and then, uh, out of this, you get that you control what you want. Namely, you see that... So concerning this claim, I believe that if you work just with CN, then you have an inequality uh, for any radius. You have some inequality. Yes. So basically, the what was done, it was, it's classical for C to the N. Yeah. Then it was done for a non-positively curved uh, bounded, uh, bounded symmetric domain by Wang and Tau. And then this claim is a generalization you have to think that the horizontal di directions in period domains, they look like bounded symmetric domains. Of course, this is wrong because this is, not, uh, this is a totally uh, non-integrable um, in system. But in the horizontal uh, directions, uh, you have a very negative curvature. So this comes from that. And where, where the, the fact you have to take small are large enough comes from? Is it necessary for bounded symmetric domain? Or? Mm -hmm. No. Uh, it's also necessary for uh, bounded symmetric domain. I mean, yeah, as far as okay, I have to check. I'm sorry, I didn't check. Uh, yeah, I had other details to check. I, I didn't check this one. Um, no, but I guess at some point you need probably you need some additive constant, and then uh, when you take a radius large enough, you kill the constant. I think there is something like that when you really apply uh, the long formula around this. But okay. Um, okay, so out of these two claims, you get you now you compare them, and then you get the proposition that for any epsilon larger than zero, the, uh, the cardinality of the set of gamma in I, which was the set that you want to prove, uh, is big, intersected with G of Q, 
uh, such that the height uh, of gamma is smaller than t, uh, uh, then is something which will be bigger than some t to the epsilon, right? Because you are comparing this exponential with that one. And then uh, now you know that i is definable, so you can apply a pillar Wilkie. Do you intersect with g z or g q? Huh? Do you intersect with g q or g z? Uh, I don't care. G z is enough. Here, here you are really counting with g z. So. Um, <coughs> but anyway, the inequality is in the right direction, so this is no problem. Uh, by pillar wiki, it tells you that this i contains a semi-algebraic curve c containing infinitely many integral points. In fact, many integral points. In particular, you need at least two integral points. OK. Uh, OK, so let me try uh, now uh, to uh, finish the proof that the, stabi the joint stabilizer has to be infinite. I'm uh, taking a bit too much time on this, but OK. Now that we are here. OK, so now you argue, uh, you, have, uh, you have this i, and you have proven that you have a semi-algebraic curve containing it. So now there are two cases. The first case is that suppose that uh, when you translate your v uh, by these elements, then this is equal to v for every c in c. But then this means that v is stabilized by uh, now c, you know that c contains infinitely many integral elements. And now you know that, uh, uh, well, OK, I should have started by saying that I, I, I assume that uh, there is uh, no torsion in the monodromy. So I, take, I pass to a finite etal cover, and then OK. And so, uh, but then uh, gamma is stabilized by a non-identity uh, identity, uh, integral element. And so this guy is infinite. And so I see that v is stabilized by an infinite group. And so I'm done. So we are done in that case. Right? This is a trivial case where I created a curve, and by accident, it happens that this curve is stabilizing entirely v. And then obviously, I conclude that the stabilizer has to be infinite. But of course, rem I remind you that this is not enough, because uh, in the first statement, it was only for almost all uh, v. Uh, the stabilizer is finite. So this statement itself does nothing for you. But so now we can assume, can assume now that uh, CV varies in the Hilbert scheme uh, with C in C. OK? Um, <laughs> so uh, now uh, the claim is that, uh, um, as you know, that C contains at least a non-trivial uh, integral point. Uh, uh, you know that um, uh, this implies that uh, phi of uh, C uh, V intersected with W uh, is not contained in a strict, uh, weekly, a strict weekly special uh, for uh, all C but countably many. Because when you apply it to C0, which is, is this other non-trivial uh, uh, element, then uh, as W is stabilized, you see that this is the same thing as your hypothesis on a, a V intersected W itself. And so it's not contained in a strict proper. And so now you just get a countable uh, bad guys, as there are only uh, countably many uh, families of uh, weekly specials. OK, so you get this. And now you look at the picture. So you compare the action, and the claim is that uh, there are only two possibilities. So uh, either uh, there is no fixed uh, n zero dimensional component u of uh, C v intersected with w as C in, uh, in C varies. So let me make a picture to clarify the thing. So you have this w, this diagonal. Then uh, you have your uh, v. So uh, for simplicity, I will make the assumption that the intersection is just a point. Now I'm assuming that this family v is moving. 
So this was my V, and there is some other CV, right? And uh, the guy that uh, considering so this is CV, and here this is my uh, U zero. So, okay, and now I'm assuming that there is no uh, fixed uh, uh, such component. So in the picture, this means that I have a picture like this. Not only V zero is moving, but uh, or let's call it, but uh, this U is also moving. Okay. So, uh, so let me just write V intersected W, although this is still uh, one component. And then what you do is uh, then uh, you uh, contradict the minimality of your uh, triple by replacing V by uh, the union of uh, all C in C of CV. Okay. So uh, when you do that, you increase, increase this increases. Uh, both uh, dimension of V, right, because you have one more uh, dimension here, uh, and dimension of the intersection. So here you have to be convinced by the picture by one, right? I mean, if I'm in this situation, when I take this family, I get one more dimension for V, but also one more dimension for V intersected with uh, W by one. So uh, this means that uh, you are lowering the type, right? Because you are not changing the base, which was S, you are not changing the difference of those two things, but you are changing uh, uh, the last one. So uh, you are lowering the type, and you get a contradiction um, by by, uh, for this new uh, family. Cont contradiction to the minimality of the type that you had. And uh, what is the other case? Well, the other case is a different picture where uh, uh, or there exists such a U, or there exists such a U. So what is the picture now? Uh, you have your W, and then uh, you have your uh, uh, you have your V here. And uh, when you move your V, then you have this family uh, CV. So your CV will be of the same shape, but uh, here you have a fixed U. You are moving the family of, uh, of your V, so this is CV, this is V, so you are moving along C, but it does not move U, so they have to collapse like this. And then uh, you uh, do the other procedure, namely you uh, take the intersection, so replace V by uh, the intersection of a C of the CVs. Uh, and then what you do is that you are lowering uh, the dimension of V, of course, so of course in these pictures it's kind of bad, because <laughs> but because this is exactly you. But uh, without changing uh, dimension of v intersected with u, and so you are also lowering the type because the dimension of s is still the same, but the second, which is the difference, becomes smaller. Um, Okay, and so this is uh, this is basically the, uh, so you get a contradiction. So this is a rough uh, sketch of the proof. So now you are free to try to check all the details. Um, okay, so uh, now uh, what I want to do uh, is to move to uh, typical intersections. So uh, the question is, we are as before, we have V over S, uh, we have uh, uh, phi from S to D mod gamma, and again I would assume that gamma is not torsion. For simplicity, we'll see uh, why later. Then we, we have this Hodge locus of S uh, tens V tensor that I defined, this is a countable union of algebraic subvarieties of S. If you have a countable union of algebraic subvarieties, you can ask what is the Zariski closure, are, are there any nice uh, geometric property of this? So this was uh, my original uh, question. So sadly enough, it happens that with the mm, a geometer, so with the method that I have, uh, uh, I cannot touch the points. And anyway, as I explained, in this setting, uh, the special points, uh, you do not see anything. You don't understand really what they are. 
because they are not necessarily CM points. And even if they were CM points, you don't know that they are defined of a number field. So there is no Galois orbits anywhere in this business. So uh, I will restrict myself to a positive uh, component of the odds locus. So y in S is positive. So what does it mean? Well, this is a bit stupid. If uh, just, so we take an irreducible subvariety of S, and I say it is uh, uh, positive if the image has positive dimension. So in some sense, you can just imagine that this map is uh, uh, um, uh, an immersion, and I'm just considering sinks of positive dimension in S. Okay. Um, then, uh, what is the positive Hodge locus? So uh, uh, we know that this positive uh, this Hodge locus is a union of special subvarieties, and then I just take the union of uh, the all strict. Positive, so I just add positive in the definition, uh, special subvarieties. So this is still a countable union of algebraic uh, sub, uh, subvarieties of S, and I ask the same question, but for the uh, uh, positive locus. And the theorem, which is, uh, I think, kind of surprising, uh, at least I was not expecting it, so uh, by myself and uh, Odinovska, is that, uh, okay, I will make an assumption to simplify the statement. Suppose that uh, the joint Montforte group is uh, uh, as a joint uh, simple group. So I don't want any product uh, business. So, uh, sorry, a joint is simple. Okay. And then the claim is that uh, this a priori countable union is either a finite union, and then either this Hodge locus of S V tensor positive is a finite union of strict special subvarieties, and in particular, so it is algebraic, or it is Zarsky dense. And there is nothing in the middle. You cannot create interesting geometric uh, subvarieties of S. And as I said, I mean, this result is new even for uh, Shimo varieties. Oh, I could have written there, maybe. So as I said, uh, you take S in AG, principally polarized, uh, abelian, moduli of principally polarized uh, G-dimensional abelian varieties, close the irreducible and hot generic, so that you have this, uh, that the joint Montforte group is a joint, just a symplectic group. And then, uh, what is the hot locus uh, positive of S? Well, this is just uh, S intersected with the collection of all special subvarieties of AG, and you keep only uh, the positive component. And the claim is that this thing, so you are in AG, right? You have your S, and you take the intersection of that thing with all the special uh, things, but you keep only the positive component. So the picture is very bad because I'm not able to take positive dimensional intersections. But anyway, so uh, this positive guy is either uh, S1 union, union SN where uh, Si is of the form uh, S intersected with some Shimura subvariety of AG, or Zariski dense. Okay. So uh, you can compare these results to, uh, in some sense, more classical results coming from differential geometry. So uh, there is a, a, a result to Izadi and then generalized by uh, Chai. Uh, to any Shimura variety, but let me just give it for, for AG. Of course, there is a statement for any Shimura variety, uh, um, which tells you that if you take this positive locus, then uh, in fact, you can prove that this is uh, analytically dense. 
So dense for the Hausdorff topology, so yeah, analytically dense. Uh, if S is very big, the co-dimension of uh, S in AG is smaller than G minus 1. And for chi, uh, you have a numerics that depend only on the ambient Shimura variety. So this is one comparison. You see that here there is no condition on the uh, dimension. Uh, but of course, the conclusion is just for Zaisky. Uh, and uh, you can also compare. So this is to compare to Andre Hort, where uh, the statement is that if S uh, contains so you are not looking at intersection, or you are looking at trivial, I mean, really atypical intersections. Uh, the ASCII then set of uh, special subvarieties of AG, uh, then uh, S is special itself. Okay. So this is a typical intersection. This is typical. Of course, not completely typical in the sense that I need that the intersection is at least of dimension 1. But this is not a typical in the sense that uh, you are not uh, having an excess necessarily. OK, so uh, how do you prove such things? Mm. No, this is the main problem. If you give me an example, I'm completely unable to tell. So we take a family of hypersurface of uh, P24 or whatever. Uh, I have no idea. Of course, I can make some conjectures. Once more, I am expecting that uh, the closest you are to Shimura varieties and the closer you are to the density. That happens uh, like here, but uh, I don't know. It's not completely, not clear at all. This is a big problem, but the problem is that usually it's very difficult to compute a Mumforted group. So what was the, question? the question was, are there any nice example where you know in which situation you are? So uh, what I'm saying is that uh, even here in AG, it's not clear. I mean, I didn't spend too much time trying to construct examples. Now I'm will try to come back to this because I think this is really, in fact, interesting. But uh, seems to be really non-trivial to decide. Uh, OK, so let me try to explain uh, what happens. So uh, for simplicity, suppose you start with a variation of attraction of weight 0. Then uh, what is the picture that you have? So you have S, and you have V. And so V uh, is your fiber bundle, uh, holomorphic fiber bundle or algebraic fiber bundle over S. Then, uh, OK, take your fiber. So you fix a point uh, S in S. You take uh, the corresponding fiber Vs. So what happens? Well, first, if you fix a point a class lambda in, in that fiber, you, uh, uh, you have, geometrically speaking, you have the flat leaf passing through lambda. So luckily, this is uh, biolomorphic to S. But of course, there are monodromy uh, problems that it will come back uh, under the monodromy. So V of lambda is, uh, by definition, the flat leaf of lambda. And so this is a subset of uh, V, a priori really disgusting, right? Because if lambda is not a rational class or a complex multiple of a rational class, then usually the, the monodromy will have uh, accumulation orbit. So this means that this leaf will come back and accumulate to the original one. So this is really a bad topological set, OK? Um, then uh, the, uh, the second thing that you have, which is important, is uh, but you have your Hodge filtration. So you have a linear subspace, Fi, which is your Hodge filtration. And so uh, for each uh, uh, such leaf, you can look at the locus where Vi, that we call Vi of lambda, which is uh, the intersection of V of lambda with Fi. OK? And then uh, I will call SI of lambda the projection. So it's just a projection. So this is a subset 
uh, inside S. Okay. So, uh, so as I explained, well, what are the good points? The good points is that uh, um, um, uh, uh, yeah, maybe I'll skip this. Uh, the good point is that uh, SI of lambda, well, uh, both uh, VI, VI of lambda and V of lambda have a complex analytic structure, a canonical one, right? And the reason is that you have to think of those guys uh, as uh, embedded in the etale space of your local system. This etale space is an enormous complex analytic space, and those guys are complex analytic uh, subvarieties there, okay? But of course, uh, so this is a good point, uh, but the, the bad point is that if lambda does not belong to uh, the projective uh, VQ inside PVC, um, uh, then uh, V of lambda and a fortiori VI of lambda uh, has no chance uh, are not C analytic uh, sub varieties of uh, V. Yeah. respectively fi of v, right? They are complex analytic in the etale space, but not in the holomorphic bundle because of this return uh, by the monodromy. So, and uh, you have to compare this. In fact, if you look at uh, what Catani and Kaplan prove, they prove that uh, in you are in the situation of, of projective, so Catani uh, and Kaplan, they look at the case where i is equal to zero and lambda is in PVQ. And then in that case, the Hodge locus of lambda is exactly what I denoted by V0 of lambda. So this is the locus of flat transport of lambda, which are Hodge. So they project onto uh, 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 the Hodge locus of lambda, which is uh, with my notation S0 of lambda. Uh, so this, this is the locus where some determination of lambda uh, becomes a Hodge class. And the true result of Canadian Kaplan. So I explained to you that we, using time geometry, you can reprove that uh, this is algebraic. But what they prove is that really uh, this guy inside V is uh, algebraic. And that uh, 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 this guy inside uh, S is uh, algebraic. And moreover, that this uh, projection is finite. Right? So what happens is that for the flat leaf of a rational class, the monodromy will be discrete. So you have a nice uh, topological structure, but when you restrict to the V0, this is even better. You get something uh, finite over its projection. Okay? Good. So uh, now, uh, to prove the theorem, well, in fact, we come back to that initial question of understanding uh, the VI lambda for all lambda, not necessarily rational. This is the main ingredient in the proof. Okay, so uh, there will be two ingredients. There is a global algebraicity statement and a detailed uh, study of uh, the VI of lambda and then of SI of lambda. So uh, theorem A, which is a global algebraicity, uh, and for me it was really surprising uh, that for I in Z and D in N star, you can define the set VI larger than D as being the union of all these terrible leaves. So you take any complex point in your, uh, in your uh, vector bundle and you look at the union of all the VI. So the union of uh, this terrible uh, thing. So suppose you are in class here and then you continue it a bit. Okay, but you know that you have monodromies. So those things are not algebraic, and you look only at those which are at dimension at least d. So this is the meaning of this parametrization. Okay? Of course, at the end, I will be interested in the case d is equal to 1. But uh, so this is a subspace in FIV, and it projects to uh, SI uh, v larger than d. So by definition, this is just the projection of that guy. And this is inside S. And uh, the claim is that this is algebraic on the nose, which is crazy, but 
at least for me it was crazy. So if you take each of them is disgusting, but if you take the whole union, uh, then this is algebraic. I don't want to. Uh, okay, I, I guess I will not give the uh, proof of this, and I claim this has nothing to do with Hatch theory. This is a statement about algebraic flat vector bundles. So algebraic bundles with uh, algebraic flat connection. Uh, so you don't use the homeomorphism procedure? No, no, there is no homeomorphism. This is purely uh, algebraic geometry. And but the corollary of this, which is very important, is the following. So suppose now that you look at vi larger than d, and you take the intersection with the uh, local system, uh, the Q local system. And then you take the Zariski closure. Then, uh, of course, it has to be contained here. Because this guy is algebraic. And so it means that you are saturated in positive dimensional horizontal stuff. So this guy, there exists a U, the way of writing it maybe, is that you have a Zariski open dance U, such that, in fact, U is saturated in uh, ah, let me give this definition uh, f i uh, x uh, included in v i larger than d intersected with v q. I wanted to go fast, but the result is that I don't have uh, the required notation. So uh, where uh, and so this n i f f i x is a union of irreducible C analytic component of uh, your uh, V of lambda intersected with Fi uh, through X. Okay. So the union for X in U. So there is this a big uh, Zariski open set dense uh, there, such that through each point, if you look at the intersection, it is at least of dimension uh, larger than D. Okay. So this is what you get out of this. So uh, uh, now, uh, um, yes. what is the second uh, ingredient is to study uh, SI lambda. And then uh, what you get is uh, theorem B. Uh, that tells you that this SI of lambda czar is weakly special. So I don't know. Those guys are disgusting. Yeah, those SI of lambda, projection of intersection of my flat lit with FI, they are really disgusting uh, S. But if I take the Zariski closure, there is no choice. This is weakly special. And here, uh, this is basically uh, a direct application of Lax-Lindemann uh, for a variation of a structure. Because you see that uh, upstairs in the fiber bundle, you are really taking something algebraic, projecting it, and taking the Zariski closure. So, uh, okay. So the corollary uh, that you get out of this, uh, so this is a corollary of uh, corollary A and theorem 2, uh, is the following is that there exists a U now downstairs. Uh, Zariski open and dense uh, in uh, the Zariski closure of SI of uh, VQ. So this means that now I consider only the rational class, uh, lambda in VQ. Then I took the corresponding VI of lambda for the rational class. I project and I take only the components of dimension at least D, ZAR, which is also saturated, such that uh, U is contained uh, in uh, the union for X in U of uh, weekly special varieties. So you, you have a very strong uh, um, statement telling you that U is saturated in weekly special varieties of dimension at least D. So YX uh, inside uh, SIVQ larger than D uh, ZAR. So where YX uh, is weekly special of dimension at least D uh, passing through X.
So using this global algebraicity plus axiom domain, you finally get this, that this set that you thought you couldn't touch when you take the Zariski closure, it is saturated in weekly special. And there uh, you are almost done. So let me uh, maybe give the argument for uh, the end of the proof. So proof of theorem uh, four, which was this theorem uh, there uh, that I already uh, stated. Uh, in the first lecture. So let me, let me give the proof. Okay, so you look at your uh, hard rockers and you take only the positive component. Okay? So by definition, this is what I've denoted uh, here by S0 VQ tensor larger than 1. This is the union of uh, uh, all the projections of intersection of flat leaves of rational class in the tensor uh, uh, product of my original local system, such that the flat leaf intersect F0 in dimension at least 1. Okay? So this is my guy. And then there is a finite, uh, first re finiteness result of Deleuze, which is classical algebraic group theory, that tells you that notice that here I'm really arguing with the local system V itself. Here this is an infinite dimensional local system, so there is something to be proven. But what Deleuze proves is that this locus is really a finite union of S0 of some irreducible representation of the Mumford tail group appearing in this very big uh, tensor product. So there is some finiteness issue here, but uh, this is no problem larger than 1 uh, for VI uh, finite dimensional inside uh, V tensor. Okay, so uh, now you apply the corollary B. What do you get? Well, you apply it uh, uh, to uh, each of those finite pieces. Uh, so there exists a U uh, which is Zariski open and dense in HL of uh, S, V, tensor uh, positive czar such that uh, for all x so you get that that guy is saturated in uh, weekly special such that uh, for all x in u uh, there exists wx weekly special of dimension at least one uh, contain in uh, this Zariski closure. Right. I know that my Zariski closure is basically saturated in this weekly special. Okay, so now uh, what happens? Well, either uh, there exists an X, and this is what I cannot control to answer your question. Either one of those miraculous guys appearing thanks to X in demand is a full S. So, and then uh, I'm done. This means that the Zariski closure has to be S itself. But you know, I mean, in this action domain business, you don't know what you get out. You just get a weekly special, but it's hard to control exactly what happens. Or, uh, for all X in U, uh, WX is strict. So, weekly special, strict. Okay, so now I didn't use yet uh, my hypothesis of simplification that the generic Mumford Tate group is uh, simple. So as Mumford Tate of uh, S V uh, adj uh, is simple, any uh, W X uh, which is weakly special and strict is contained in W prime X. Uh, special and strict, right? This is a description that I give you of uh, of the weekly special. Is there is a product situation, and as I know that the global space is not a product itself, then it has to come some to some special strict. But now you have the uh, you have the situation where uh, those special, by definition, they are already in the set you are considering. So. Uh, but such W prime X is already in this odd locus of positive dimension. 
by the very definition of what is what it is to be uh, uh, special. So uh, this means that in fact you have that this uh, Zariski closure of the Hodge locus contains this Zariski uh, dense uh, open set U, which is contained in the Hodge locus uh, of SV. So this tells you that those two things have to be equal. And uh, so and so this guy has to be algebraic and a finite union of special subarities. Questions? Uh, you look Dubious, no. right? I mean, this is what is surprising. A priori, you have families of uh, weakly special, but because I'm able to extract out of it a, the special, a special which is itself already in that space, then I'm done. Okay. Uh, ah, I mean, even in advance. But uh, I think I will stop here. I don't want to give uh, more details on that. Questions? If you don't assume uh, that the um, generic Monforte group is. Then, in fact, I have a complete description. I didn't want to write it. The theorem is more complicated, but basically, uh, you get a product situation. It tells you that uh, you are coming from uh, a product situation. Okay, if you want, if you want me really to write the statement. So it's not written in the paper, but after that I realized I can I can also do it. So maybe I will uh, make an. So the theorem is uh, so in the general case uh, you have the following situation. You take so the theorem is that you take z an irreducible component of the closure. V uh, tensor positive, zar. Okay, and I want to describe this z. And then the claim is that then there exists a uh, unique uh, decomposition. So first you, uh, you get a product decomposition into two factors. So this induces a period map uh, phi 1, phi 2 from S, uh, from S, from, uh, S to uh, D1 mod gamma 1 cross D2 mod gamma 2. Okay. Such that uh, you get also a projection. So basically, what I'm saying is that everything will come from a factorization of S. There is a projection of S onto some S2, such that uh, uh, phi 2 factorized through S2. Okay, so I'm saying that my PN map is product and. Uh, uh, one factor uh, comes from uh, uh, I sorry such and now uh, now we can describe Z in terms of those data and so three okay I should put uh, commas around theorem because I think I've proven it but I didn't write it so okay so but uh, I think this is correct and three uh, there exists an irreducible uh, Z two in S two such that z is in fact the, uh, the preimage of uh, z2. So z is inside s, and here you have your projection to s2. Uh, this is a Cartesian uh, product. And now, uh, what are the conditions such that? So now the conditions will be on, on describing z2, right? Now I've, re I've reduced the problem of describing z to the description of z2. And so now what happens? Such that uh, either Z2 inside S2 is special for phi 2. Okay. Or uh, Z2 not special. Yeah, up to now I know this is not much. Uh, uh, in S2 and contains at most 
finitely, finitely many maximal positive strict special subvarieties. Special. Uh, for S2, but contains a Zarsky dense set of special points for phi 2. So basically, the answer is that if you do not make the assumption that the Mumforte group splits, uh, that the Mumforte group is simple, then you are back to the original problem anyway of trying to describe the situation where you have a Zarsky dense set of points. The only improvement being that you got rid of, of the positive dimensional guys. You know that you have only finitely many. And uh, well, uh, you can construct examples. This is what I told you. But uh, the only examples that I know, in some sense, they come from uh, Shimura varieties. So I'm not so happy with that. Right? I mean, you have Shimura varieties where you have a Zarsky dense set of CM points, but no positive dimensional uh, special sub varieties. So you can take this factor uh, being that one. But, all right. <laughs>